Hello everyone, I'm Tynan Sylvester, and this is RimWorld Alpha 18, A World of Story. This update has been a long time coming, something like five months by my count, and it's a big one. It's got a lot of stuff in it. We've been cleaning a lot of things up and filling in a lot of pieces and adding content sort of all over the place, so it's not really an update about one thing. It's got new biomes, new weapons, new inspirations, new mechanics, tons of new stuff, so let's take a look. So, the first thing I want to show you is a small thing, but I hope it'll add a bit of narrative depth to the game, which is that if you look at the world map, the areas now have names. So you can see there's the Borlo Mountains, Grace's Mistake Sea, Ice Crocodile Mountains, and these are all randomly generated, of course, just like almost everything else in the game. And I hope these names will add a bit of narrative flavor to the world so that players can roleplay a bit more where they land and the journey that they make across the environment. In addition to that, there are new biomes to play with. You're seeing one here. It's a swamp. So there's three types of swamp. There's tropical swamp, temperate swamp, and cold bog. And they're quite unique. They're not huge biomes. They only cover small areas. But they are absolutely choked with vegetation, which is something unusual in this game, to the point where it becomes very difficult to move or build anything. Uh, and fights play out a little bit differently because there's so much cover everywhere. In addition to that, there's large areas that cannot be built on, which changes the balance a little bit. So I think these will offer a new sort of building experience or traveling experience. The next thing is the new Storyful Combat System. Now this isn't going to change the balance of the game, I hope, but what it will do is help players tell a little bit of a story about what happened in their combat. Whereas before the game just played out combat numerically, now combat actually records a little narrative of what happened. And you can read it here in the story log. And each attack, each swing and hit and dodge and jump is recorded and calculated and you can review them. So it helps you see what happened and it can be really fun to play out a story uh, after the fact and just, you know, look what, what went on. Because sometimes, you know, there'll be really ridiculous situations. So uh, we hope to make this a bit deeper in the future, but everything works right now, and players in the test version have already been having quite a bit of fun with it. And it works for everything too, so it'll work for gunfights, it'll work for melee combat, and so on. So next, I would like to show you some new super weapons we've added. We've added quite a few special quest rewards to the game, because we want to give players a reason to go on quests out of their base, and they can only be gotten that way. And one of them is the orbital targeter device. So here, Magpie is using an orbital power beam targeter. And this directs a beam of power from a orbiting ancient satellite onto a position here. It can only be used once, but it's absolutely devastating as you can see. But that's not the only variation. There's also a orbital bombardment targeter, which in addition can also be only used once and it just has a slightly different effect. So obviously these are devastating, the wind buttons against most threats in the game, and they're really hard to get. You can only use them once, but when you do, they're bloody awesome. In addition to that, there's a number of other exotic things. Here we've got the Vanimetic Power Cell. It's ancient tech you can't make, but you can find it. It generates power forever from nothing. Uh, we've also got some other ancient devices you can use. This one is the Psychic Emanator. So it just has a radius effect on mood. It just makes people happy nearby. So you want to think where you're going to put that to have the most important effect on your base. Here's uh, Artie with the Psychic Emanator Soothe effect. Just boosting her mood by five points. Next up is the Healer Mech Serum. Sometimes people have a really bad wound that you want to get rid of and there's no other way to do it except with this super high-tech device that nobody can create anymore and you use it once and it will heal something really bad that that person has that can't be healed any other way and this includes ancient scars or missing limbs it'll do anything but you can only use it once and it's really really hard to get so the next thing that I want to show you is some new mental breaks. We've always had mental breaks which happen if the 
character's mood is too low. Uh, and now we've increased the variety of those. So here, I'm going to show you some of them. This one is the insulting spree, where your broken character will choose a specific ally and follow him around, calling him names for a while and destroying the relationship. So this is sort of a minor mental break. It'll happen if their mood is a little bit bad, but not completely awful. We've got other ones here. Let's see. Uh, tantrum. So what Tantrum does is it makes the character break down and start smashing things. So it's basically property damage. It's going to cost you resources. They don't hurt any people, but you can see uh, Starling here is going around breaking down doors and smashing up furniture and items. So if this happens, it's, it's basically just an economic and time cost. The next new mental break is, let's see here, Jailbreaker. Okay, this one's interesting. It will actually have your character uh, lose his mind and go and essentially momentarily rebel against the colony and go to a prisoner and help them execute a jailbreak. So he unlocks the door, incites the prisoner into jailbreaking, and the prisoner will run away into the usual jailbreak thing, which can include grabbing weapons and fighting, or just fleeing, smashing things up, and so on and so forth. So. This one will make holding prisoners a little bit more interesting. And there are other more extreme and possibly weird and funny mental breaks that I'm not showing you right here. But in addition to mental breaks, to balance this out, we've added mental inspirations. So now when a colonist is very happy, which before did really nothing except for slightly increase their work speed, they can have a random chance of becoming inspired. And there are multiple different inspirations that they can experience, including recruitment, Inspired surgery, inspired art, inspired trading. In this case, this character has experienced a inspired surgery, which means that the next surgery that he does over any time in the next several days will be uh, successful. So you can use that as an opportunity to execute a very difficult surgery. Here we're going to have Ally C have a inspiration which puts him into a work frenzy. So this has a huge positive effect on work speed for about a day, a, bit, a day or two. So here you can see he's working at 2.5 times his usual work speed. And there are more inspirations besides that that I'm not showing you right now. But next up, I want to show you a new quality of life improvement, which I think a lot of players will really like, which is that you can queue up jobs now. So here we've asked this character to, in a sequence, collect several different resources. And he's going to do them all as instructed, and then repair the wall. So. This is extremely versatile. It's actually remarkably hard to implement from our point of view because it separates validating jobs from initiating jobs uh, and adds a bunch of weird situations in between. But we've done it and now you can play with it. Next up, here's a tribal raid and you'll see it's a bit more interesting. We've added a lot of new tribal content. They were a bit dry before, not too much stuff, but now you can see they've got war masks, they've got uh, tribal veils, they have new bows, recurve bows, it was. And this should be all usable from the tribal point of view if you are playing a tribe, and of course when you're fighting them. So that'll make that just a tiny bit more interesting. You can also now build bed rolls, which are essentially portable small beds. There's different size furniture, a big table, there's two by one tables, there's three by three you can see. Uh, various new end tables and stuff to put in rooms. Ton of stuff. Ton of stuff. So, I want to show you some of the incidents. Now the crop light works differently. Before it just made your crops vanish, but now the crop will actually have a lumpy blight on it that you can cut away and it'll spread. So, it's something that is still destructive, but if you're on the ball, you can... Uh, that's spreading. If you're on the ball, you can actually burn away your crops or try to cut away the part that's been, uh, been ruined, so having a good grower will be useful in that circumstance. Another incident that we have added is, let's see, what was it? Tornado! Yeah, so here we're going to put a tornado right in the middle of the colony. Usually they'll appear in a random place. And the tornado does what you'd expect, sort of SimCity style, it goes around and destroys stuff. It won't affect colonies under mountains, but it will do serious damage outside. So it might miss you completely. But if you're unlucky, it might carve a path right through the middle of your colony in the middle of a raid. So there's various ways that can play out. Uh, 
I'm hoping this will be something that could add a little bit of spice to late game colonies that are a bit too well established. Next on to the map generation. Look at these caves, aren't they beautiful? Now when we generate a mountain, we don't just generate a big lump of rocks. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes we generate caves. And sometimes there are dormant insect hives inside that wait for you to come by. They don't attack, but they'll be there until you deal with them. There are mushrooms you can harvest to eat. They glow, they look cool. And this just adds a little bit more interest to these maps. So that is it. That is RimWorld Alpha 18. Uh, it's been a long time coming. There's a bunch more stuff that I haven't even showed you. There's a ship ending sequence where you fight off enemies for a while and so on and so forth. So please look at the list of changes. This video would have gone on forever if I showed everything. So I was just trying to get through it. I am Tynan Sylvester. Of course, I tweet at Tynan Sylvester. And this is RimWorld. And that's it. I really hope you guys enjoy Alpha 18 because uh, we had a great time working on it too. See ya.